columns, a critical part of any pole barn. And back when pole barns started, they were actually telephone poles that were used as those columns where the name pole barn came from. And as technology has advanced, there's really two main columns used today, solid columns and laminated columns. So let's talk about solid columns first. Those are usually a four by four, six by six, eight by eight column, solid. Strength is fantastic, they're great columns in that regard. The one downside of solid columns is when you try to treat those columns going into the ground, you can't treat all the way through, especially in the six by sixes or eight by eights, so they're too thick to treat all the way in. So sometimes if you're at high water table places like the Midwest is, that water table will slowly erode those columns from the inside out. So the second column is a laminated column. This is the most common column seen today. And a standard laminated column is a three ply two by six. So what that looks like is right here. You have three two by sixes binded together, which is where you get your three ply term from. And then the benefit of a laminated column is each two by six is individually treated. So that's unique to a laminated column versus a solid column where you don't have that weakness in the center of your column because the two by six is laminated. Another benefit of the laminated column is it's very customizable. So I said the standard is a three ply two by six. You could also go bigger. So some tips for you if you're wanting to save money. Anytime you go above 16 feet interior clearance, normally you'll jump from a two by six to a two by eight. So it'll be a two by eight, three ply. Under 16 feet, typically a two by six, three ply as well. However, when your width also comes into play. So if you're over 80 feet, again, standard, above 16 feet height, 80 feet wide, you go to a four ply, and you'll see that here. So this is a two by eight, four ply column. So you've got four two by eights, which you're gonna get your four ply. And the reason for this is because anything over 80 feet standard typically has a two ply truss. So if you look up above, you can see that you'll have a two ply truss coming in to the two middle columns on that laminated column and your two outside columns give that rigidity and those get bolted and connected and kind of a saddle connection that you'll hear. Another example would be even a five ply. And you can see this here, there are five ply here that goes up to the top of the truss. And this is another way that you can get a really wide building, 100 feet, 96 feet wide building with a laminated column due to the customizability of a laminated column. So to wrap up with some cost saving tips, if you don't need a certain height and you can go 16 feet or lower, that'll save you on some material costs as you'll have a two by six and you don't need to jump up to a two by eight column. And again, on width, if you can do an 80 foot width or lower, that doesn't make you need a two ply truss, which allows you to not go to this four ply and stay at a three ply two by eight or a three ply two by six versus a four ply two by eight, saving on some material costs that can bring your project costs down. And then in conclusion, as we said, really a laminated column, solid column, your two most common seen columns today. And the benefits of a laminated column is it's customizable and you can treat the inside to eliminate the risk of rotting out as quickly as you see with a solid column. Solid columns are great structurally, they're strong, but they can be a little more susceptible to rotting down the road. Well, I hope this video is educational for you. You can click here to see some of our foundation videos and other educational videos. Subscribe below for future videos that we'll have coming out on this channel to give you ways to save some money, cost tips, and how to design and think through your building in the future and get it off the ground. So always remember to build with confidence.